okay to objectify men. <laughs> central to feminist theory that can roughly be defined as seeing or treating a person, usually a woman, as an object. The focus is primarily on sexual objectification. Objectification in the sexual realm. Oh, objectification, you old chestnut! When are men and women going to stop looking at each other as slabs of beautiful sex meat? Never! You know that semi-factoid that people form an opinion of you, an impression in the first 30 seconds of meeting you? Well, that is objectification. You can't actually have a well-formed opinion of someone based on anything other than their looks within the first 30 seconds. And I walk down the street occasionally and see a particularly fine specimen of the human race and think, oh, gonna need some tzatziki to calm this down. Tzatziki is, um, it, it, it's a Greek yoghurt with, um, with cucumber and mint, so that, that's what it cools you down. So viewing people as objects in our daily lives isn't so much of an issue, and I don't really want to get sucked into a debate about objectification in general that way. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to specifically refer to media objectification. You know, seeing men and women half naked in films and on TV, and using it to sell us everything from deodorant to toilet paper to life insurance. Scottish widows looking good for your money. And while women's bodies have been presented in the media for a long time, and men's too, there has been a recent rise in the depiction of half naked men in popular media. Mm. I could eat off. But feminists like myself are usually up in arms about that sort of depiction of women on screen in an objectifying way. So why aren't we kicking up a fuss about men being depicted in the same objectifying manner? Well, to answer that, we need to look at why there's a problem with women being objectified in the first place. Laura Mulvey wrote a pretty influential and pretty important essay called Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema. It's nine pages long, so let's go for the Cliff Notes version. The theory is that most films are created with the male heterosexual audience in mind, and so it is shot from that perspective, a perspective which eroticises the women on screen, but doesn't really see them as whole people. The camera often lingers on certain body parts, legs, butt, and other curvy, soft, feminine things, so the female is reduced to her constitutive parts, rather than the whole character therefore making her an object, robbing her of personhood. The woman is passive to the active gaze of the man. Why is the gaze male? Well, the industry is still dominated by men. Taking the most complete stats from the Women's Media Centre for 2012 and 13, women only directed 28.7% of top grossing films in 2012 and only accounted for 23% of creators, 24% of executive producers, 38% of producers, 30% of writers, 11% of directors, 13% of editors, and 2% of directors in photography of broadcast, cable, and Netflix television shows in the 2012-13 season. Well done, world. Well done. You're getting there. Slowly. Very very painfully slowly, but you're getting there. Making women passive objects on screen paves the way for objectification in real life and a dominant relationship between men and women of subject and object. How? Well, when you see women being treated the same way again and again on screen, what real difference is there between that and the real world where men are the watchers and women are watched? But the thing is, Men aren't the only people in the audience, women are viewing this too. And since they are looking at the story through these male eyes, they start to see themselves the way these men are seeing them. Okay, well this theory applies to film, but what about advertising? Ooh, look at the hot semi-naked lady. Men, if you buy this product, you will have swarms of these women coming after you, chasing you, eating your... backside? Women! Don't you want to look as hot as this? Don't you want to be desired like she is? Buy this? 
toothpaste, and you will be. So, women's bodies really are commodified. But I'm not sure what the big deal is, really. Literally everything is commodified. Commodified just means make money from it. Want some ecologically responsible coffee? Here you go. How about some chocolate that gives cocoa farmers literally the tiniest extra amount of money? I mean, come on, there's a transgender beer, for Christ's sake. Take anything, any sentiment, political affiliation, or ideology at all, and human beings will find a way to stick a barcode on it. So does the same thing happen to men? Well, yes and no. There's a gaze on them, sure, that focuses on certain things like abs, and biceps, and pectorals, and strong jawlines. And anyway, there's sex meat, right? But there's still a power asymmetry here. The men being objectified in film are still more often than not the protagonists of the story. They're fleshed out characters, not just a fantasy machine. So we never really see them as just objects of desire. They're also the subject of the story, whereas women are often less important to the narrative. Think of the Bechdel test and how few films pass it. Literally, the criterion are just two named characters who are female that talk to each other about something other than a man. Have a think about which films can actually fit that description. I'll wait. So yeah, when you're a secondary female character who doesn't have much development through the narrative, it's easier for you to be reduced to just your body parts. But when Captain America or Poldark or Thor whip off their shirts, some of the women and men in the audience might drool into their popcorn for a second, but no one stops thinking of them as fully developed characters. So there's nothing seriously wrong with the gaze being turned on men. Okay, advertising is still pretty bad, but as we've already established, I'm giving capitalism a free pass on that one. So as Alexia Lafalta concludes, Until you live in a world in which your objectification leads to excessive victim blaming, unwelcome catcalling, mortifying high rates of sexual assault and rape, and having your value in society based exclusively on what you look like, I will continue to exercise my God-given right to objectify you. Because the objectification of women leads to all of those things. The objectification of men does not. And that's why it's okay to do it. And men don't even seem to mind all that much. Chris Pratt is openly quite proud of being sex meat for the film industry, and doesn't see anything wrong with it. And think of all the guys who have topless pictures of themselves on Tinder. So ladies, feminism says it's okay. Men aren't really harmed by it, so we can objectify them guilt-free. Woohoo! Get ready for the double standards and double gin and tonics. I'm gonna go and watch some Bake Off. At least, that's the most common idea that I've come across in my research. However, sorry to burst the bubble, I actually disagree. I'm gonna say something that I really wish I didn't ever have to, but I think feminists are trying to have their cake and eat it too. Why I object to male objectification comes in two parts. Firstly, practical. If we want to actively challenge media standards, and the way that women are depicted, then we have to hold ourselves to consistent moral principles. Boring, right? In one of the articles I read for this, Shannon Ridgway said, In the end, all arguing, hey, women objectify men too, does, is detract from the real problem. Deeply ingrained misogynistic sexual oppression against women. Yeah, there are definitely bigger issues which need to be dealt with, and people turning around and saying, well, women are committing the same double standards now. It's not fair. Isn't exactly the greatest response to our argument, but it is one that people find convincing. People are very unaccepting of hypocrisy. And if we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard to get these guys to shut up and stop whining for a second, then it's probably worth it for the sacrifice of Channing Tatum gyrating. Sorry. Then again, it's not like us doing that is actually going to stop people from finding other excuses to dislike feminists. 
they can always come up with more reasons to be against us. So maybe it's not worth that much effort. Hmm, okay. What about moral arguments against objectification? Philosophy time! Welcome to the show, Immanuel Kant. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Part of Kant's long, long, long books on moral philosophy is the idea that humans shouldn't be treated just as a means to an end, but also as an end in themselves. Humans, he argues, have inherent value. When you treat your fellow human as simply a means to an end, you are denying them their humanity. Treating someone as a means to an end would be, for example, getting my friend to buy me drinks all night and never paying them back the money. I'd be treating my friend as a personal piggy bank, rather than treating them as my friend, as an end in themselves. To treat someone as an end in themselves, you have to show them respect. So, for example, I can treat the shopkeeper at my local corner shop as a means to an end when I take things to the till and I purchase them. But if I have a conversation with the shopkeeper and I treat them as another human being with respect, then I am also treating them as an end in themselves. It is only wrong to treat someone merely as a means. You can treat them as a means so long as you also treat them as an end. So, when I look at a sexy slab of man meat and I have no regard for his personality or his feelings, then I am treating him as only a means to an end. Therefore, it's wrong. This is massively airbrushing Kant, but... But Eleanor, you already said that the men who are objectified are usually the protagonists of the story. So we're not just treating them as means to an end, we're also treating them as ends, that are central characters. Huh. I guess you're right. And they're getting something out of the deal too. They've got you to buy the movie tickets, or the toothpaste, or body spray. They aren't being exploited, they're working within a fair contract that they've sat down and negotiated. Well, wouldn't that be true of women too? Actresses are allowing themselves to be objectified in a contract, so suddenly it's okay? Well, there's still a greater industry pressure on women to get their kit off to get a role. Unlike men. Think of any HBO show. So they're not negotiating from an equal place of power. Maybe. And even if women are agreeing to it, the same way as men do, their choice is still damaging to other women. So... It's okay for me to look at pictures of Captain America's abs. I think so. But it still feels wrong. Are you sure this is okay? Yep. Wow. <laughs> I was really not expecting to come out of this with that opinion. But the arguments are pretty convincing, even if I do still believe there's some sort of double standard going on. Eh, do as I say, not as I do. Thanks for watching Feminist Baking, and uh, Keep the flames in the oven. And uh out of the comment section.